diversity of cannabinoids with ions can be synthesized smoothly. And finally, these molecules are highly ordered in the solid state. Due to the hydrogen bonding and dipole-dipole interaction, these molecules form a head-to-tail arrangement. In the orthogonal direction of the Celsius core, cannabinoid core, molecules stack due to the rice stacking and form molecular O. But why we were interested to study the anchoring of this molecule on metal surface? Peter, our specialist on surface science, we are interested to, to study that the this anchoring molecule of this molecule on dipole metal in one small organic and Peter, symmetric. Our specialist oh. on surface science, imagine that the one that is the anchor is the one that is the one small and for the other and this molecule where our ideal candidate on surface science, imagine that the one that is the one that is the one that is the one small and for the other and this we want to take profit of this collaboration to know more knowledge on the reactivity of our compound. And what we were interested in is to know if the quinonoid core is able or not to be anchored on metal substrate. If the molecule is coordinated on the metal surface, by how the molecule will be, uh, will be anchored? Is the molecule will be anchored for the oxygen function, for the nitrogen function, or both of them? And the molecule is laying is standing up on the surface or the molecule is laying flat on the surface. Finally, Bernard, our collaborator, specialist on electronic transport, considers our molecule as double electric cable. And our idea was to try to use quinonoid ions in order to make an excellent electronic communication between the two electrodes. And we plan, we expected to to connect the two electrodes by using, taking profit of the NO biscalating abilities of the ligands. And we expected that the two delocalized system of the ligands will allow an efficient electronic transport between the two metal electrodes. To reach this goal, the molecule should be anchored for the two function and the molecule should be standing up on the surface. When we began this work, no result on the anchoring of quinonoid on anchoring of quinonoid ions on metal surface were described in the literature. So for our first step was to study the anchoring of quinonoid ions on gold. And for this study, we selected the butyl ions. Why? Because it's a simple molecule without functional group that can compete the coordination of the molecule to the surface and because it's soluble in organic solvent. Now, I will present you the functionalization process that we use to functionalize the surface. So, it's quite simple. We take a clean oral surface, we deposit inside now, I will the present you the functionalization we process that we use to functionalize hours, the and then we remove it, so we wash it's it. quite simple. We, we take a clean oral surface, and we deposit it inside now, I will the present you the functionalization we process that we use to functionalize food and then we remove it, so we wash it, quite simple. we take a clean oral surface, and we deposit it inside the functionalization process that we use to and we Thank you. 
From the study of its diffraction, we can this conclusion are totally opposite to the one that we can make just totally by um, uh, intuitive opposite. thinking. To the one that we can make, unfortunately, by, this compound uh, is not anchored to the surface, so we stop is intuitive thinking. But we make this photo emission on the molecular film of this respect, and effectively, as but, uh, as we can see, see this uh, photo emission on the molecular of this is not semi metallic and is really opposite because it's an insulator with N type defect. So, we reach a goal because here we have only a slight modification of the structural chemical structure so molecule, which is fully with the properties of the film on the surface. But the difficulty is, is that it's very difficult to, uh, to, um, to, uh, to be able to, um, uh, to, f to, um, to, f to see, uh, to, uh, um, we can, to predict. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> In parallel to this work, we also study the anchoring of kinonitrate ions on different substrate. I will not discuss more in details about this, but I can say is that the, uh, the method of functionalization used is very, uh, has some influence on the orientation of a kinonoid core. If we use the um, a solution to fun if the functionalization occurs for the solution, the kinonoid core is preferentially oriented perpendicular to the surface. If we evaporate the molecule on the surface, then the molecule lay flat on the surface. And in this case, the dipole moment of our molecule is drastically reduced from 10 to 1 dubai. Here is the molecular arrangement of the same zut ions on two different surfaces, copper and silver. And you can see that depending on the surface, you can have same zut different ions on two different arrangements copper and silver. And you can see that so in conclusion, on the surface, I, sh I hope so, that I show you that um, we, are, we, we are able to make a thin, homogeneous and compact film of kinonoid ions on gold surface. But this uh, films exhibit some electronic properties and these electronic properties can be changed by uh, varying the air substituent on the nitrogen function. And um, I also show you that uh, the molecular arrangement on the surface is also dependent on the nature of the surface. So to, con to finish on this work, I want to thank people who were um, who, who participated to this work. Pierre, of course, my previous director, Bernard Doudin, Peter Dobben, Axel Anders, who make uh, with Peter Dobben uh, the study on the molecular arrangement of the kinonoid ions on silver and copper surface. We get financial support and to, result, uh, to, to make this work. And I want to show you some pictures of Strasbourg, the cathedral, the European Parliament, and what we call the small France. And Strasbourg is in the northeast of France, and it is, in, it is in the border of Germany. So, since in, uh, June, in September 2017, I joined the group uh, Switchable Molecular Materials directed by Azedin Bousseksu. Today I will present you some results concerning the, uh, the spin, spin crossover molecular layer on substrate and I will more particularly detail the study of its formation and its use for an, an optical application. But I will begin with a small introduction to the SEO phenomenon. 
some transition metal complex can exist in two stable states, the low spin state and the high spin state. The spin crossover phenomenon is a reversible change between the low spin state and the high spin state of the metal of the central metal ion. The SCO spin crossover phenomenon is triggered by apply of some stimuli like temperature, magnetic field, pressure, light irradiation. And in general, spin crossover phenomena is accompanied by a change of different pop, uh, physical properties like magnetic, optical, electrical, mechanical. If we consider the magnetical properties, the complex in the low spin state is diamagnetic, whereas the complex in high spin state is paramagnetic. Now, what we call mechanical properties is the, the complex in low spin state has a molecular volume uh, smaller than the complex, the molecular volume of the complex in the high spin state. The dependent, the temperature dependent transition SCO curves is a plot of a, um, a percent of um, molecule in high spin state as, uh, as a function of the temperature. In solid state, where the molecule can strongly interact each other, we observe some special behaviors. Indeed, when cooperative effects are strong, the transition is abrupt. We observe the formation of an esteresis loop. This esteresis loop is a domain of instability. And we observe memory effect. For this presentation, I will focus on one um, spin crossover complexes, which is the iron triazolyl, iron 2 triazolyl borate complex. This complex is a neutral complex and has a low molecular weight. This complex can be synthesized in two steps following the procedure described by Trofimenko in 1967. The first step is a, a melting salt type reaction. It consists only to heat at high temperature, 160 or 170 degrees, the association of pyrazole and tetraborohydride potassium. The complex can be synthesized smoothly by the action of iron precursor to the scorpionate ligands. Concerning the spin transition characteristic properties, here is a figure showing the uh, magnetic susceptibility as a function of the temperature. As you can see, the transition is complete, is abrupt, and centered around 300, 333 Kelvin, 60 degrees Celsius. We observe a small hysteresis loop, approximately 1 Kelvin. We can also use reflectivity measurement to put in light the spin crossover properties. Indeed, the um, complex in, low, in the low spin state is pink. The complex in the high spin state is white. But we observe for single crystal if uh, it was the transition is still more abrupt than the one observed in the powder. In the case of a single crystal, crystal, the transition is fully vertical. You can also see that the esteresis loop is around 1 Kelvin. And here, red, blue, and green is something to represent the free cycle that we did. Free cycle means that we come from low spin state, we go to high spin state, and go back to low spin state. And one thing which is really important is that these three cycles are perfectly similar. This means that the complex is stable and that our measurements are perfectly reproducible. The team gets uh, single crystals of the complex in the low spin state and also the complex in the high spin state. And both of them crystallize in the same space group. From the low spin state to the high spin state, we observe 
an increase of 26% of the octahedral coordination volume. In the crystal, the molecules are linked together by a large number of hydrogen bonds. And they are also observed an, anis an anisotrope increase of the volume of the cell. As the complex is neutral and has, it has a low molecular weight, we can imagine to prepare its film by evaporation, thermal evaporation, of a molecule under reduced pressure. When we remove the, the, the substrate from the evaporator, we obtain films, and this film is, is, a, is a pristine films. And if you and the association of humidity treatment and thermal treatment allow us to switch from a pristine film, amorphous films, to and crystalline film. I want to show you now one, uh, the first um, um, proof of why it's so important to get crystalline film. Delta absorbance corresponds to the difference of absorbance in, of a complex in the low spin state and the complex in the high spin state. In blue is the delta absorbance of the sample that we just removed from the evaporator. Now, in black, it's represented the delta absorbance of the sample that we treated. And as you can see, the delta absorbance of the sample treated by the humidity and the thermal treatment is much more important than the delta absorbance of the sample just removed from the evaporator. This means that uh, by the crystallization process, we improve drastically the optical properties of our films. Here are presented the spin crossover curves of this complex. And here is from the film. If the first cycle is a little bit shifted, the three other cycles are perfectly similar. Again, this means that our films are stable and that our measurements are Hardly reproducible. As in the solid state, the spin transition is complete, it's abrupt, and is uh, around 30, um, 333 Kelvin. But I should also mention that if you try to make cycle, five cycle of this one, of the pressing film, and uh, you will never obtain a superposition of the five cycles. What we will obtain is five very distinct cycles. It means that the SO properties of a pristine film are really not reproducible. We also perform XRD diffraction on both powder and films, and both of them are crystalline. And the signal here at 10 to theta mean that uh, crystallization is preferentially oriented along the C axis. What I present up to now on, SEO proper, on the SEO complexes is for me state of R, because I did not work on this. But what I can say is that I begin to work on this type of, from this. Now, we know that to make crystalline film, we should, have, uh, we should treat the, the surface by humidity treatment. And our question was, is it vapor, uh, water vapor only, the only one able to make crystalline films? So what I mean is uh, we want to know if other type of vapor is able to make the, to induce the crystallization of the molecular films. So what we did is after the removing of the sample from evaporator, we deposit the substrate in these devices, which is quite simple, but it allows uh, the films to be in contact of the vapor of solvent without to be in contact of the solvent. And we let it during 10 minutes, and then we measure the absorbance of these films. First, what we observe is in the case of the water, we obtained similar results than before, even we used 
a slightly different um, devices. Afterward, with that we can see also is that in general, the delta absorbents are quite similar, whatever the solvent. One exception is films treated with dichloromethane. In this case, the delta absorbent seems to be half of others. If we look the spin transition curves of these films, we realize that uh, we get, uh, in general, um, abrupt transition centered around 333 kelvins and um, a complete transition, except for films treated with dichloromethane. And in this case, we have only half of the spin transition. We study these films, we make uh, X-ray diffraction of these films, and what we know is the films are crystalline. And again, the signal uh, 10 to theta is uh, characteristic for the uh, preferential crystallization along the C axis. But again, the films treated with dichloromethane are different because here, if you compare the intensity of the signal for others to the signal obtained for the films treated with dichloromethane, you saw that it's much lower. It means that this film is less crystalline than other. And you can see here that this film is less also, the crystallinity is less oriented than other films. Here are presented uh, optical and IFM picture of a substrate. And this picture seems to indicate that uh, films treated by humidity lead to a more homogeneous films. So, in conclusion, what we observe is that uh, films treated with dichloromethane are different than all over one. And we think that this difference is maybe due to the fact that uh, the dichloromethane is less able, compared in comparison to other solvent, to accept hydrogen bond. We can say also that the water vapor are not on the only one which lead to a crystalline film, but most homogeneous samples are obtained by humidity treatment. So we want to continue to study the impact effect of uh, percent of humidity on the crystallization process. Here is one graph showing how we do to increase what we do to change the humidity. We begin with the ambient humidity, normal humidity. Then we, um, in, uh, we increase in constant in a constant way, up to 80% of humidity. Then we keep 10 minutes the humidity at 80%, and then we reduce the humidity at, 20, at the normal humidity. And during the time that we vary like this humidity, we measure the absorbance of the SEO layer. What we can see is during the five first minutes, the absorbance increases very slowly. Then. When the humidity reaches 70%, suddenly we get a big increase of the absorbance of the SO layer from 0.27 to 0.4. And this increase is irreversible and, and stay constant. So even stay constant, even we reduce the percent of humidity. From this, inform from this data, what we know is that the crystallization process occurs when the humidity is up to 70%. And it is a fast process because in eight seconds, we, we um, pass from a pristine metastable state to a crystalline and stable state. During this experiment, we realize that another criteria is very important, and it is the time that, uh, that we call uh, um, 
that the time that uh, we spend between the removing the sample from the evaporator to the humidity treatment. So we decide to show, to study the impact of the time aging time. It means that uh, we vary the time before the treatment, between the uh, after to remove the sample and before to treatment. For example, this one, we keep it two and a half hour. We remove the sample from the evaporator. We keep it two and a half hour at uh, normal uh, ambi at, uh, ambient atmosphere. And then we submit these films to humidity treatment. And what we see is uh, if we treat immediately the films, then we get an abrupt change, as we observed previously. If you treat it, if you treat the films, but we keep it, we let 15 minutes in ambient atmosphere, you see that we, you increase the absorbance, but this increase is less uh, abrupt. And in the case of a film that you let it two and a half hours at ambient atmosphere, then the humidity treatment seems to have no effect on the absorbance of the SEO films. As the, this absorbance is very high, we can think that maybe it's not really a problem if the humidity treatment is not effective for this type of film. But X-ray diffraction show incontestably that more we wait to treat the films, less the films is crystalline. And if a film is not crystalline, it's not good for us because we have not reproducible properties and the properties are less good. If we look about SEO transition course, the one, the, uh, the one that we treated immediately is common, it's classical about what we already said to you. In 15 minutes, the transition is okay, correct. It's not really good because here you can observe some, uh, uh, the fact here is not really an hysteresis, it just means that we have something which is not um, um, homogen. And the transition is a little bit less abrupt and, uh, and we see that it's less complete. And in the case of a film that we keep it at during two and a half hour before to treat, to make the immediate treatment, we see that the spin crossover transition is not full and the transition is less abrupt. And as I already mentioned to you, if we want to make, after this experiment, want to make four cycle, then we know that the four cycle will be superposed with a black curve in the case of immediately treated sample. In the case of aging sample, then we will have different cycle. So we know from this measurement that, it's, uh, that the crystallization occurs when the humidity, when the humidity is upper than 70%. And we know that uh, to be efficient that uh, we should uh, treat the film immediately after to be removed from the evaporator. Now I will show you one um, application of these films on optical for, for, for optical application. What we want to do is to create an hybrid material will associate a spin crossover complexes to a luminescence compound. I remind you that the complex in the low spin state absorb much more the, the UV wavelength than the complex in the high spin state. And what we want is we, we think to associate this complex to the iridium complex. Why we selected this iridium complex? It is because uh, its luminescence, it's, uh, uh, this complex is, is uh, really used for luminescence purpose. And the luminescence is, the mechanism of its luminescence is well known. We can prepare films of this complex by thermal evaporation under reduced pressure. And we know that um, its films confirm, uh, con um, keep the luminescence properties. Then, this complex emits at 500. Uh, 510 nanometers if it, if it is excitated at 300 nanometers. And this 
value is very good for us because the excitation is perfectly where we have a more difference between the low spin and high spin state. And the emission is at 510 nanometers. It means that in one zone, that our SEO complex does not absorb. So if we have emission of the luminescence, we should observe it. Our idea is to use the spin transition to modulate the luminescence intensity of the hybrid materials. Our material is composed by two layers on the glass substrate. The first layer is the iridium complex. The second layer is the spin crossover complex. When the complex is in the low spin state, then it will absorb all UV irradiation. So the iridium complex will not be excited and you should not see luminescence. When the complex in, is in the high spin state, then the complex in the high spin state will not absorb the UV irradiation and then the complex, iridium complex will be excited and you should observe luminescence. Here, with this graph, you can see that the absorbance of these hybrid materials vary in function of the temperature. And the more important change are observed between 60 and 67 degrees Celsius. This is quite normal for spin crossover complexes. It's quite usual. But this result is very interesting because it shows that even with we have a, a layer of um, iridium complex below the spin crossover complexes, the presence of the iridium complex seems to have no influence on the on the um, transition uh, on the spin crossover properties of our iron complexes. What is still more interesting is that uh, the luminous intensity of the luminescence vary also in function of the temperature. And again, the maximum of change are observed between 62 and 70, uh, 77 degrees. And this variation of the luminescence intensity is due to the presence of spin crossover properties. Now, if you take these two figures and you make another one, here, the blue curves correspond to the spin transition, and the pink, uh, red and violet curves correspond to the thermal dependence of uh, luminescence intensity. You can see clearly that uh, you have some clear correlation between these two phenomena. When one curve decreases, the other one increases. And the cross point between these curves is around 33, uh, 33, 337 Kelvin, which corresponds to the spin transition temperature. So from here, what we can say is that with this result, we prove that we can use the spin transition complexes to modulate the intensity, the luminescence intensity of the materials. But now what we want to do is to see if um, we can have a greater um, modulation of the luminescence and, and intensity by increasing the thickness of a layer of the SAO layers. And the results are here. So we prepare two other samples with 200, nearly 200 nanometers and eight, 800 nanometers of SO layers. In red is the um, iridium complex pure without SO layer. And as you can see here, when it is only iridium complexes and in the range of temperature that we study, we have no effect of the temperature. The luminescence intensity keep constant. And what we no, uh, what we can see here is that more you increase thickness of the SAO layer, more you have modulation of the luminescence intensity. So for the thickest film, and at low spin state, less than 8% of the luminescence is observed. You can also plot the ratio of intensity as a function of a ratio of transmittance. And what we observe is that we get a strict one-for-one -one ratio between these two values. And like this, I can say that we have a fine control 
of the luminescence modulation. So in conclusion on this part, I show you that we were able to make film of this SEO complex on surface, that uh, we obtained films with a really, uh, with really extraordinary quality, robustness and uh, quality, uh, even um, uh, thick, um, Crugosity is very low. To get this quality of films, we should use the vapor treatment, and this is really the key to get this quality of films. And then I show you that uh, we can use the SO layer in order to, like a reversible UV filter for the luminescence modulation. And if you look this result in other way, you can also say that uh, the layer, of the luminescence layer, is also a nice tool to, uh, to make in evidence the, spin, the thermal spin transition curves. Finally, I want to thank people who work on this subject, um, member of a team, Christophe, who is a collaborator in our team in Toulouse, Laure, who made all X-ray diffraction. Um, this is uh, our financial support. And here are the picture of the group recently. And the permanent in the group are Azedin, the director, Lionel, Gabor, and William. And the person who are involved more particularly on that I show you was Aline, Xavier, and Victoria made a lot of uh, the study for in the beginning with uh, uh, that uh, was published in Journal Material of uh, Physics. And here I want to finish with some picture of Toulouse. With this free picture, you can get why French person said that uh, Toulouse is the pink city. Here is, of course, because we get uh, Airbus in Toulouse. And here is the Canal du Midi. And uh, Toulouse is in the south of uh, France and very close to the ocean, ocean, sea, and mountain. And I would like to thank you for your kind attention. Pueden hacer en español y hacemos la traducción. Si alguien quiere hacer alguna pregunta en inglés o en español, hacemos la traducción. ¿Sí? Ah. Ahorita voy para allá. For the first part, you build the Svitergion uh, using a pencil amine, but did you try to use uh, chiral benzylamide or only racemic benzylamide? Which one you mean? Did you try to use the chiral benzylamide in the first part? No, I don't use the chiral one, but I know that I am, it's able to, to uh, I can do it. Okay. On this one, we did not check, we did it for another purpose, proposal, and we get uh, effectively uh, in onto pure compound. Okay. And this is very easy, in fact, by the synthesis. If we come on the synthesis of compound, in fact, we have two processes to synthesize this compound. The first one is to use seven equivalent of primary amine. So if we want to make it, it's very easy. You take the primary amine, and if the primary amine is in pure, then you get the product. So we have two methods. The method A has the advantage to be a one-pot reaction. It means that uh, we put the amine, the diamino result phenol, and we let it two hours at room temperature, and we get the zeta ion that we expected. This method should be realized in presence of air, and uh, the only default of this synthesis is that we use seven equivalent of amine. Another method is this method, is method B, and it is what we call transamination reaction. And the, the advantage of this method is to use only two equivalent of amine to make the sweet ions. Okay, thank you. 
so in this so in this part also you said also that uh, you have you can put um, different substituent on on the vestil groups and small uh, modifications can uh, modify strongly the final properties of your films yes yes so uh, but uh, you have put a, a methyl group. Have you ever tried to introduce a trichloromethyl group? Because a methyl group, if it's true that uh, this group uh, is not uh, very strong as donator, but uh, maybe you decrease the cationic um, uh, uh, in, in part in, in your Sutagenic uh, compound. Yes. So I don't know if you have a, a an if a, a positive uh, if effect. At the In fact, we did not study because with the benzyl, if even you put the chlorine, even if we get some uh, some effect on the aryl ring. We have a methyl then group, so you lose the connection. And yes, we were also able to do it, but uh, after the problem is, uh, as I mentioned, we cannot measure all. And, uh, okay. and for example, I did not uh, with a chlor, but I did with a fluorine, bromine, and it was working. Okay. okay. But from this, we were more checking about molecular arrangement, and it's for this that uh, we select this one. Okay, so in the second part, uh, uh, it, it, it is very interesting the effect of solvent in the crystallization process. Uh, so, have you ever seen polymorphisms in the crystalline uh, compounds? Not in, on, on the surfaces, but uh, in the compounds, in the isolated compounds. Um. In fact, we did it with dichloromethane because when we saw this, we said, okay, let's try to make crystals in dichloromethane and see, mm -hmm. and we get the same structure. But after, if we remove the sample and we get dichloromethane inside the structure, okay. so it's difficult to, to know because here it's probably that we have no solvent inside. Okay. Also, I just wanted to ask you about the second part. Uh, when you pass from the absorption part to the LS, so uh, the 97%, um, which process did you, did you use? For example, um, was it a thermal process or was it a, a, what kind of process did you use to uh, pass from the absorption to the, to the LS part, to the luminescence? To the luminescence. So, for the luminescence, can you repeat your question, please? Yes. Uh, you have uh, ninety-seven percent on yes. the second uh, from the absorption part to the luminescence part, and uh, where, did, where did, did that come uh, from? For example, you had a, a, slide, a slide where it, um, I don't know if you can put it. Yeah. Almost the last. Mm. This one? No, before, before, before. Uh. Yeah, it's not the luminescence part. Uh-huh. Mm, okay, the previous one? More? Uh, maybe it's the other. 70% of our okay. Yes, well, you have a, like a percentage, and I don't know if you, you or what kind of process um, do you use to pass from the absorption to the luminescence part? Um, if it is a gas, if it's a, I don't know, you, you cover it from the 92% that, um, I don't know, is the boiling, the boiling um, level of the water. How do you pass to that 97%? 
of uh, Celsius degrees? Or what's the process you use to, to acquire that, that luminescence part? For the luminescence part, what we did is that uh, fluorescence measurement were, me uh, did, uh, m were performed on uh, surface. Okay. So we have, as I mentioned here, we have two, two layers of compound. Okay. So we, we have uh, iridium complex, and to make the iridium films on the glass, we put it the glass substrate on the, on the evaporator, and we begin to evaporate the iridium complexes. And then we put on the top the SEO complexes. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Puedo hacer en español, puedo hacer la, tra la traducción, si alguien quiere. ¿Nadie? No, no sean tímidos, podemos hacer la traducción. <ríe> sí, al, al, ¿Alguien más? ¿No? ¿Todo claro? Ok, vamos a hacer examen. No, <ríe> ok. <laughs> we, um, on, on, only uh, th thank you so much because very very interesting talk and in fact uh, the first part uh, we, I, I want to, to know around for the synthetic route but more or less Carmen asked you and, and for this part because uh, I think the, the synthetic method is very interesting and I don't know if it's possible to, to know around uh, for this part uh, for to know exactly, because only you show uh, the uh, only the molecule, but I don't know. It's possible to know around the synthetic part. Okay. For the first the, the first part. Yes, in general, but it's uh, the method that I present to you is uh, works quite well. The only problem that we get uh, is uh, when we work on the, for the anchoring of a molecule on the surface. It's uh, we were interested to know if. Um, how much uh, we can, uh, um, as ex each extent that we can go on the strictly anode molecule in alpha position of nitrogen to uh, to conserve the NIU interaction. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, in this case, we get problem. And I can. So if we work, as I mentioned, we have two methods and we can use it. And uh, for example, for the cycloexilance with ions, uh, if we prepare this one, then using the normal method, we succeed. We, we have only few percent of uh, quinonoids with ions. Mm -hmm. But we did, the next try was to do not the method under reflux of ethanol, but under reflux of water. And what we see, what we were pleased is that we increase from 10 to 55 percent of yield. And uh, as you can see in entry three, if we change uh, the temperature, um, if you change from uh, 100 to 80 degrees, you get also five, uh, 58 percent. It means that the difference here, what was the crucial issue, is not to make the reaction in ethanol but in water. And here we get 55% of yield, but what we know is uh, we have a full conversion of uh, parenzoic ions and only 55% of cycloexilic ions. And this moderate yield can ex be explained by. Uh, a decomposition of a product during the reaction. Mm -hmm. So what we do, 
what we did is to try to make the reaction not under normal way, but under microwave irradiation. And in this case, in one minute, we were able to make this compound with 76% of yield. And it was the first time that uh, the synthesis of quinonoid zwitter ions were performed under microwave irradiation. And then we can use it for other type of uh, molecule, and we were able also to use uh, to, uh, to synthesize this one with a good, relative good yield. And this one is also something that we have it in Indian to pure form. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, ¿Otra? ¿Alguien más? ¿No? Bueno, pues agradecemos muchísimo a la doctora Lucy Ruth Tabul. Oh, I'm so sorry. And gracias a todos ustedes por estar el día de hoy. Muchísimas gracias. Y queremos agradecer a la doctora con un pequeño presente del instituto. We want to give you a little present for, for you. And thank you so much for your very nice talk. Thank, thank you. you. Gracias. Gracias a todos. Bonita tarde.